At the end of the day, being of color and making clothes downtown LA, the level of expectancy for me is high. I can't afford not to be OCD. I can't afford for my product not to be the best. Think of it as like a baseball team or like a basketball team. You load it up with talented people and then you put them in places where they can have success. The best of LA, yeah. you got like an all-star squad of yeah. like QC, Sowers. I think my first fear God piece was Probably the flannel. No, what, no, no. The side zips or what? It was the essential muscle tee first, like oh, the, the gray. Long, the longer tee. And then the pants, and then the flannel. You don't have to work up yeah. to, you know. <laughs> I was working at 424, so I got a discount. <laughs> that was like, that was our first account, 424. Our office was on Fairfax, and so I remember just like, taking all my samples down to 424, like yeah. by myself, like rolling them down there. Yeah. The cool thing about 424, it was the first like store on Fairfax that had a point of view beyond like streetwear. Yeah. It, it was just a natural fit. Being there when it was there, I saw everyone come into the store just to buy Farragut, all the basketball players. I saw some soccer players in there and then I saw them at the club the same <laughs> night wearing the same Farragut stuff I just <laughs> sold them like a couple hours ago. You know, my vision of the brand is, I always felt like it was gonna be beyond my like personal capacity mm -hmm. to handle. And I feel good, but I feel like the brand is doing what I thought it would do. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with the name Fair God? I was doing a uh, morning devotion with my parents and we were talking about the clouds and darkness around the kingdom of God. And there's like a fear of God if you don't know him. And there's also a fear of God if you do know him. It's a reverence, it's a respect. And I liked that juxtaposition. The name isn't necessarily promoting him, but the reverence for him. I liked that it felt gangster. I liked that it felt confident. I liked that it was also like at the foundation of everything that I believed in. Watching my dad's career in baseball, I watched him pray and fast before like job interviews. And I've seen like God work and in my family's life. I knew I had the conviction of the solutions from a design point of view, mm -hmm. but I needed like, you know, that gas to keep mm -hmm. this thing going. And I felt like that's an eternal story that could never get old, that I can always share. And, and my, my kids can look to what I've left behind and say that, hey, he walked with God to the best of his ability. Welcome to my other home. Yeah, where are we? <laughs> this is uh, this is our factory. Walk me through. What is step one? Fabric comes in and it's stored up here. Okay. Once we've confirmed we've had all the components, then we go into cutting, lay it all out, and the pattern pieces go directly next door, and they begin assembly. This is like our home factory mm -hmm. that we've had for the past like three years. Mm -hmm. And since we've grown, we're now in 13 different factories. Sick. This kind of like is the spirit that everything else kind of aspires to be mm -hmm. and everything else feeds off. What's up, man? What's up, Jerry? Hi, how's it going? This is Juan's home. Juan, Juan <laughs> runs this for me. We're very fortunate to be in a home like yeah. you're a guy working yeah. in the area. Yeah. How is it important for you to delegate to other members of your team? It's everything. You know, I mean, I can't be everywhere at once and I can't make every decision. And Juan is just an extension of a belief system that's in place. Everyone's a talent and without these people, we wouldn't be able to produce what we produce. It's really proven that luxury is here in LA I mean, yeah. and we're all capable of reaching that. I love that line, luxury is in LA, yeah. because I feel like 
You know, we're not known as the most fashionable city. Throughout these last years, people are really starting to get acquainted of like, what is the LA style? What is the LA luxury style? The luxury lifestyle has an aesthetic. Yeah. We've taken on the role and the responsibility to communicate that aesthetic at the highest level. So when will this drop? This will ship out uh, October, November? Towards October, and then it'll hit stores shortly after that. I mean, to get here is six, eight months. In six, eight months. You know, an idea can turn into reality within a few days, and then from there, and it's just a constant motion of, of producing. Not a lot of people get to do. You yeah. know, traditionally, you plan a year ahead, and not us. I think that's one of the beautiful things about yeah. uh, the way Jerry creates. So after we see the clothes being made and cut, what process is this? This is a QC, quality control. This is like the very last step. So even like something small like this is marked damage. It has to be quality control that has to be taken out. Yeah, it's just every opportunity we can get uh, to correct anything that made it this far. Our last hurrah to be able to say, no, this is the very best that's yeah. going to hit all the retailers that you guys see us at. I was kind of learning a little bit earlier. So she comes in. Yeah, Zuma. Zuma. <laughs> Zuma's our, our eagle eye out here. Like, she just knows the ins and outs of what to look for, where things might be hiding. One of the main things we try to teach people is that treat it as a consumer. You know, when you're putting your hands inside of a pocket, what are you feeling? What are you touching? Uh, where do you least expect something to have a damage? And that's exactly what we look for. So not a lot of people have made a silhouette for Nike. I feel like it's very pivotal. How did that feel and what's your process? For me, it was just kind of like, hey, I grew up on Jordans. Every shoe that I was ever excited about, was a new idea, it was a new design, it was a new Jordan. That emotion is a kid boxing up and opening a new idea, a new shape, a new silhouette that is rooted in performance. You know, we flew our last in, our shape from Italy and slimmer, more aerodynamic type of a shape that I felt like was the solution that was missing from Nike. I felt like their performance shoes were just kind of bulky. The LeBron or the Kyrie are phenomenal basketball shoes, but it just doesn't translate to my denim or my mm -hmm. sweats. You know, I just can't yeah. wear that. Is this um, a blanket? So you've got like this French terry that feels like a sweatpant, but then you have this like hand done chenille embroidery mm -hmm. on top of it, this juxtaposed like luxury against something that feels very familiar. Mm -hmm. I love the structure of this. I um, feel like just because I'm small, things that are like more square look great on me. I'm glad you um, said that. We like, <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason being, and my production managers here could tell you, is like we lined it with like so many different things to make sure that it had the certain volume. And shape is like the quietest way to be the loudest person. Mm. If the proportion is like what it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. you can be loud and still be humble and quiet. My whole purpose in doing what I do is to like open up my sons and my daughters' minds as to what they can do in this in this lifetime. I already kind of know how the world sees me. I never felt all the way welcomed anywhere. It's that chip that kind of has us, you know, releasing collections outside of calendar. I think we all kind of live in the, the prisons of people's perceptions of us. And I think it's up to us to not make their perception of us who we are. I'm trying to create a new idea that hopefully can inform and set a new standard.